In the creative process, I find that it is almost inevitable that sometimes we get stuck. Stuck where we can't move forward with this idea that we're pursuing. And I'm wondering sometimes, what is it that makes us so stuck? It's actually not the lack of knowledge or the lack of ideas on how to move forward. It's sometimes actually quite the opposite. It's the fact that we have an idea in the first place that's right in front of our nose. It's a project, it's a painting that we're wrestling with, it's a business idea that we're trying to make work, and somehow it doesn't advance. What I find in those moments is that it is sometimes the very thing that we're pursuing that is in the way of us allowing us to move forward. It's in a way almost like a dead end that we're facing. And it's a hard reality that we have something, the beginning of an idea, the canvas that we're painting on. We've started to invest time and energy into that creative pursuit that we have on our mind. And it's not moving forward because it's the thing itself that held us back. When I'm reaching a moment like this, I'm reminded of a story I once read about, which is quite a fascinating challenge and relates to this being stuck with what we have moment. And it is called the Monty Hall problem. Monty Hall is the name of a person who had a prominent game show way back in the 70s, a long time ago. And the problem that was presented in the show was as a contestant, you were given the choice of three doors to choose from. You get to choose one. Out of those three doors, one of them would hold a prize, two of them would hold nothing. So you were given the choice to pick one at random. You would pick one and then the game show host, Monty Hall, would open up one of the other two doors. And it would always be one that was empty. Then he presented you with a choice. Now that you saw that one door was empty, the one that he picked, you could either stick with your initial choice or you could switch. Switch to the other door. And the question is, would you? You've already picked your door, you made your choice, you've committed to it, you're mentally invested. And now that you saw that he opened up an empty one, would you switch to the other one? What's the benefit? Well, most people stuck with their choice because they rather held on to what they already had than risk more by now all of a sudden halfway through the show to choose to switch, to go somewhere else, to open up this other door, even though they have no idea if they already have the prize or if the prize is in the door that they switch towards. Amazingly, statistically, from a mathematical perspective, switching doors after the game show host has revealed the third one that does not hold a prize, switching doors actually increases the chances of winning a prize considerably. Most people initially would disagree. They would say that, no, the odds are still the same. If I just stick with what I originally purchased, even though another door opened, switching does not increase the chances. Well, indeed, it does. Um, it switches it from a probability of one-third to two-thirds of getting a prize. But more importantly than the mathematical principle behind this, I think, is the opportunity to say, hey, sometimes maybe there's another door that I can open. Maybe the one that I'm holding on to so dearly, the one that I'm mentally invested in, that I think might hold some prize behind it, might not be the one that actually does it. And so when I'm working with creatives and we're trying to help them unblock, to help them overcome something, Again, it's sometimes not that they don't have an idea or that they're missing something to help them overcome their step. It's sometimes the fact that they've held on too long to that door that they don't know 
if there's anything behind. And sometimes switching is the way to go and to say, hey, what if there is another way? What if there is another door? What if I'm too blinded by the one that I have my hand on right now, that I can rattle, I can open, and I think something's behind it, but what if there isn't? So in the process, the creative process of this, I always try to imagine, where's the other door? You know, the one that I'm not staring at, the one that's not in front of me, the one I'm not yet invested in with time, energy. Where's the other one? And what might be behind that one? And if I find that one, and if there isn't something behind that one, just like a game, I think there's always another door. It's a matter of being open mentally to open physically those doors and pursue that next thing. And so as we're hopefully closing up the year of turmoil, of excitement, of new development, of hopefully a form of opening up opportunity, I ask you if you would like to join me on that journey of finding the next door to open for next year. And I hope this will be an exciting journey to pursue.